This video is a follow-on from the previous two videos in the playlist. If you have not already done so, please watch these videos first. In the previous videos we looked at this specification, develop a program that calculates an individual's gross pay. Now gross pay equals the pay rate times the number of hours worked. And we've seen this example before where we have hourly pay rate is £7.20 and number of hours worked equals 35 hours and we can see the multiplication taking place here and we get the result of 252 pounds. The solution to this specification can be derived in five stages. We develop an algorithm, produce a data table to identify the variables required, derive a simple test plan, convert the design to code and run and test the runtime against the test plan. Now you will notice that I haven't numbered these because I'm not trying to suggest this is the order that you do them in. But these are definitely five stages that can be identified when you develop a program. For example, developing an algorithm, well this is where you decide what the steps are, which will eventually become the program statements. You produce the data table to identify the various variables that the program needs. Now in truth, when you come to more complicated programs, it's quite difficult to decide which one of these you should do first because you often need to concentrate on the variables first because the solution might require the use of more complex data structures such as dictionary, lists and so on, not just the simple data types that we'll be looking at in the up and coming programs early on in this playlist such as floats, such as integers and so on. And in truth, I think you'll find when you're experienced at programming, you're thinking in terms of the variables and the data structures and the algorithm steps at the same time. Derive a simple test plan. Well, many people will do this first. And what it does, it allows you to focus on the problem. And of course, you have to produce a test plan because when you've finished writing your program, you're going to have to test it. So let's say you've done the first three stages there. What you then do, you convert the design to code and run it. But of course, when it's running, you have to test it and you test it against the test plan. For example, let's say you're working with the gross pay. So you run the program, you enter £7.20, you enter 35 Now what you should realise is that your program should give you £252 as an output. And if it doesn't, something's gone wrong. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, you could have added up instead of multiplying. Many times students will call me over to look at their programs. And they're happy because it's worked. What they mean in it, it hasn't crashed. Does it mean that it's done what it should do? That's why test plans are important. Because you always have to test your program. Because a program will always do something. It doesn't mean it's doing what it should be doing. Mainly, when you first start... You find out they crash a lot, but that's something we can worry about when we get experience to coding. So just remember, I'm not recommending these as the stages, but when you start off, it's a good idea to have a mental note of this lot and realize that you have to go through all of these stages, all of these phases when you're developing your program. But the key is you must test your code. Do not assume just because it gives you an output that somehow the program is working. The program is not crashing. It doesn't mean the logic of your program is correct. I would like you to also note that here I'm talking about simple test plans. When programs become more complex, test plans are anything but simple to develop. The algorithm data table and program were developed in the last two videos. Let's have a quick look at them here. Here we can see the algorithm, the four steps from 1 through to 4, obtain the hourly rate of pay, obtain the number of hours worked, and so on. Here we can see the data table telling us we need three variables, and here is the actual computer program. Now what we're going to do, we're going to be producing the test plan. Now many developers produce the test plan first. It helps understand the problem in advance of deriving the solution, i.e. the program. So people sit down, work on the test plan, then the algorithm, then the variables, or the algorithm and the variables at the same time, or the variables, then the algorithm. Again, I'm not predicting an order here, but here I'm talking about producing a test plan first. And it is often a very good idea. Let's look at it for this particular example. If you cannot produce a test plan for gross pay, it means 
that you don't realize that for the given inputs what the output will be and if you can't work that out you're not going to be able to write a program to calculate gross pay because it means you don't understand the problem so it is quite key the production of test plans and it is often a good idea to do it first because it forces you to get a grips on the problem which will help you derive a solution where the solution will be producing the algorithm the variables and then writing the code and of course when you produce the test plan you then test your program against that test plan to work on the test plan we need to remind ourselves of one of the models of a computer program that we've already discussed and here we're interested in data input now for the example of gross pay we should realize that the data input in fact is the hourly pay rate and the hours work and we know that the computer program we, we've written that's what we're doing we're testing the program we've written is going to be a process and that process is going to calculate the gross pay now in truth we're not really interested in what's inside that process box there this is called black box testing that I'm covering where we say right this is the input for this input we get the following output we get the following data output and in our case we're interested in what the gross pay is now if we don't get what we expect we are worried about the process we are worried about the program we wrote because it's not doing what we expected but for this kind of black box testing we concentrate on the input we predict what the output will be what we're expecting and then we test to see if we get the expected output so we produce a table like this and we can see this table has in fact got five columns if we look at the first row this will give us an idea of what our test plan is about here i'm entering seven pound twenty and here i'm entering thirty five for the number of hours worked and we expect the program to output the following two hundred and fifty two pounds zero pence now in this particular position here we put what we actually got from the program now we haven't run the program yet so we're going to have to wonder about what that is and hopefully it's going to be what we expect it to be or this cell of the column and this one here should be the same and then we write in here pass or fail now the next one is ten pound twenty in and the input hours work to forty so we expect the output to be four hundred and eight pound zero pence and then we have to see what the actual output is and then we decide whether we pass or fail now here i am entering seven point w zero where the w is a mistake what the program will do we expect it to report an error we want the program to report an error and by that i mean that the program should say to the user sorry you haven't entered a number there please enter it again and then we see what the actual output is you see we can't allow our programs to crash so we hopefully will find that our program will report the error to the user and say no no sorry that wasn't a number and then we look at the actual output and we'll see what that is a little bit later and then we decide whether we pass or fail here i'm entering ten pound twenty again and i'm entering four p and i've mistakenly entered a p for the number of hours the four and I should have been typing in another figure, but I've made a mistake, or the user's made a mistake. But we have to reproduce this when we run and test our program. And we would expect the output there to report an error as well. So I would need to complete that particular part of my table. The actual output is from the program, and then we decide whether we pass or fail that particular test. And of course, when we then look at the number of fails, we know we have to fix them. But the key here is, I'm not just sticking a number in looking at the gross pay and they say, oh, look, it works. No, you have to systematically test it. And I'm not saying this is a comprehensive test plan here, but this is the type of thing that you have to do when you're writing computer programs. You have to test your programs. Okay, now we're going to actually uh, test the program. And here's our test plan. And I'm interested in the first row of this test plan. And here is my computer program here. And we can see the computer program has said, please input the rate of pay per hour. So I have a look at the first row and I can see that this is saying enter the £7.20. So I'll put that into my program here. The program then responds with please input the hours worked. I look to my test plan and can see that says 35. So I type in the 35. And the program now responds with the gross pay is 
252.0 pounds. Now I now put the actual output from my program into the table. And now if we compare these two cells, we can see they're not 100% the same. So we could say justifiably that this is a fail. But this is what I would call just a fail. It's a formatting issue which we've looked at before. I should arrange for there to be an extra zero in my program output. But nevertheless, this is a fail. So I enter fail in my test plan. We now move on to the second row of the test plan. And here we can see the computer program. And looking at the test plan, I realize I have to enter £10.20. So I'll do that. The computer responds with please input the hours worked. A quick glance at the test plan shows that I should input 40 here, which I do. And then the program responds with the gross pay is 408.0. Now, the actual output in this particular case we can see is 408.0. And now we compare the expected output with the actual output and we can see we have the same problem again. So this is a fail. Again, just a fail, but I nevertheless mark my test plan with a fail. Of course, now I'm going to move to the third row of my test plan and I'm going to enter 7.w0. So here we can see the program and here you can see I've entered 7.w0. So I've accidentally hit the W on the keyboard and now I'm going to press enter. And as soon as I press enter, we can see this red text appears here telling me that the program has crashed. And it gives me a clue as to what's happened. And if you look here, it said, could not convert string to float. Now, float is obviously something I'm only expecting numbers and, of course, the decimal point. But you can see there's a W appearing in the number, so it cannot convert it to a float, so it crashes. So what I now have to do is, in my actual output, well, I have to report this. I actually have to say, in my test plan, that it has crashed and then I mark my test plan as you would expect with a fail. You now think how you would complete this particular test plan. What do you think will happen for this input here? Put the expected output here, run the program with these inputs and complete the test plan.